even with the error of 7% or 5% the hospitals were like this is a huge error because yes. uh, it may uh, make patient die exactly. so do you think uh, that those errors those 5% or 7% errors can be eradicated or mm -hmm. removed mm -hmm. sure so there are a few things. First of all, to answer your first question about Sophia. <laughs> so, just in case, I mean, I'm sure who here's heard of Sophia, just so I know, have a good idea. Yeah, okay, so basically, yeah, everyone's heard of Sophia. Um, just from the very, very few people that have it. Um, Sophia is basically a humanoid robot that's able to answer questions and, and it's really, really realistic. Um, they, they actually, you actually met the creator of the Sophia robot, you uh, And the technology that goes behind Sophia is wonderful. Um, they use deep learning. <laughs> in order to uh, synthesize hand gestures. They use deep learning, uh, which is Google's wave net, in order to synthesize response, uh, synthesize voice. And they use a really, really interesting blockchain-based machine learning algorithm to generate responses. But it's not AI. I'm, I'm really sorry to break that to you. I mean, a lot of people like to think of this AI. They like to you know, talk about it as a um, you know, kind of singularity net, but that's not true. Um, Sophia cannot understand general concepts. Sophia can, if you were to tell Sophia something that she's never been told, it will not know how to respond to you. That is not true AI. It is simply a machine learning system. It, of course, granted, it's the most complex machine learning system out there, but it's nowhere near AI. So there might be people working towards that, but that's in a separate realm of technology altogether that we have not reached yet. But to answer your question uh, about the 5 7 percent error, yes, I agree, that is a huge error for the field of healthcare. But that's precisely why people in the field of healthcare, oncologists, aren't going to be replaced. Because you see, in the majority of cases, uh, this deep learning technology can accelerate the work that an oncologist does. In 95% of the cases, it accelerates their work. There is a small 5% that, of course, it won't be able to accelerate. But the advantages heavily outweigh the disadvantages, especially if there's a human double, triple, triple checking all the work that the neural network does. Even if the human has, say, superhuman 1% error rate or 0.5% error rate, and even if the neural network has a 5% error rate, there are error rates in different areas. The human might be better at diagnosing or biased towards diagnosing this. The neural network might be not biased towards diagnosing something else. The neural network, however, can be used as a kind of fact checker just to have another opinion on what on your diagnosis and just to make sure that you know you're taking a look at all the different points of views equally. So that's what the machine learning algorithm is meant for. It's not meant to replace the oncologist or to tell the oncologist what to do. It's meant to collaborate with the oncologist and have another set of eyes, computer eyes. Looking at so we have seen a phase where cloud computing was coming, yes. and then we are looking at the phase now. There's an AI and ML. What yes. is something that you feel will be in demand in after say four to five years, or what is the next technology that will be taking the market? Sure. So first of all, let's take a look at machine learning for a second. So there's a study conducted by Dark Gartner uh, just a few days ago. Actually, they released this. Um, only four percent of companies that want to integrate machine learning have integrated machine learning. But they also survey a lot of different companies, and 72% of all companies say that machine learning is the most disruptive technology. 13% for cloud, and 7% for blockchain. So, as you can tell, I mean, a lot of people are really biased towards machine learning in terms of what the most disruptive technology is, and I completely agree with that. I would definitely say that machine learning is the most innovative technology that there is currently, and it's going to be the most in demand. In fact, currently, it currently it is in the most demand uh, of all technologies. And the reason I say that is because, like cloud computing, it's great. I'm getting it wrong. Cloud computing is it's, it's, it's a wonderful technology, but banks are going to use mainframes. They're not going to switch to cloud just yet. Or blockchain, that's a great technology as well. But blockchain is not going to help an artist create a painting or write a song. But machine learning technology, however, as long as you have data, and as long as you have the compute power to use that data, machine learning is applicable. It doesn't matter where it is. You could use uh, typing-based biometric authentication. It could be writing song lyrics. It could be creating a painting. It could be checking the weather. No matter what it is, you can use machine learning. And there are lots of different companies that have but literally huge archive drawers full of data that they aren't making use of yet because they can't. But machine learning won't let them do so. And especially when we start solving